Hello everybody and welcome to a new video and today we are looking at the Evercade by Blaze Entertainment. So this device started development back in 2018. Uh, it was supposed to come out in 2019 but I, they ran into some delays but it's here now and they it pretty much came out with a plethora of games. Now looking at the screen here I want to tell you guys that it's on the PSP level. It actually looks really good. Uh, you guys know the PSP is one of my favorite portable systems out there so when I saw the screen for this I automatically fell in love. The system pretty much has a six button layout when it comes to playing games. Think about um, maybe something similar to the Super Nintendo as in controls and you'll feel right at home with this system. One of the first games I wanted to test out with the buttons was Xeno Crisis. Xeno Crisis pretty much uses every button on the layout so I figured I'm pretty good at that game and if I was bad at it on this version then something was wrong with the controls. I did pretty well but besides playing like on camera I, I would say I played pretty well but the controls felt pretty good. Also, if you decide to get this device after the video, I recommend the Evercade Premium Edition as it comes with its Hari Collection, Namco Museum, and Interplay Collection. If you get the regular pack, it just comes with Atari games. And that pack, I mean, with this system, you need more to play than Atari games. I'm not trying to rag on it, but you just got to have something to go with it. Also, another thing is that the system does not come with an HDMI cord. It actually needs a mini HDMI cord. Uh, for you to be able to play on a regular television. And um, that's pretty much one of the things I wanted to test out immediately to see how it looked on a regular television. But luckily, uh, these HDMI cords are very cheap. You'll need a mini HDMI cord. And heck, you might even have one laying around your house. But uh, if you need one, they're definitely pretty cheap on Amazon. I also really like the game cases the games come in. They look very professional. They all come in instruction manuals giving you detailed information about each game. Plus, they're all in color, which is nice. You know, like, it's rare to get a, like, a, an instruction manual with color these days. So I love that nice little feature. And also, it's really easy to keep these games uniform, which is really nice. So I love how the cases came, like they looked and everything. They're just very easy to, like, keep nice and neat. The game carts themselves really remind me of the old Game Gear carts. I really like how they look, and I like how the art is on the inside instead of the outside. Now, the system comes with a USB charging cable. And pretty much the battery life on this system, I want to say, lasts about four hours, uh, maybe five tops. Um, and also, uh, through the USB cable, you can update the system if they have any firmware updates. So they've already have one that I've known of, and that's the one I have here, the latest one, of course. And I think that's a cool way of updating the system in case there's any bugs or problems with it later on. So as of this video, there are 13 volumes out. Uh, I'm going to try to look through most of them. Um, I'm not going to look at every single game on each volume, but I'm going to kind of give you the gist of probably what games you might want to play on these volumes. So let's check them out. All right, so first up, we're going to look at Atari Collection Volume 1. Now, I'm not a big 2600 fan of Atari, but I do like the 7800. Uh, Alien Brigade is a 7800 game. It pretty much plays like Operation Wolf. Um, there's POWs on the screen that you try to avoid from shooting, but also there's like um, these like aliens dressed up as humans, but you have to like, they look like aliens, it's really weird. So um, you kind of know what targets to shoot, but at the same time, with the way the graphics look sometimes, it could get like a little bit muttered, but it was still a fun game and I actually liked this one. I was trying to get a good rating, but I ended up messing up at the end, but still, I had fun playing this one. Moto Psycho. <laughs> Oh God, that name is pretty much a simple racing game, you know. Uh, with this one, it kind of well, it kind of reminds you of Hang On with um, just not as cool, I would say. Um, it doesn't have any music. All you're hearing is the, the motor motorcycle sound, and it sounds pretty annoying. But still, it is a racing game where you're trying to beat the timer. All right, so next up is Ninja Golf. <laughs> Ninja Golf pretty much is you play golf as a ninja and if you don't get a, like a hole in one which is probably impossible you have to like go to your next putting hole but you're, you have to fight off people to get there so you fight off frogs other ninjas trying to stop you um, it's pretty hilarious stuff um, they should actually remake this game but uh, Ninja Golf is one of the cooler ones on this collection All right, next up we have Namco Museum Collection 1. This has probably more familiar games that you guys have come to know. Uh, we got Pac-Man on here. We got um, Dig Dug, of course. And also Mappy, um, which is actually the prequel to Mappy Land on Nintendo. Um, but one of the other cool games on here is that they have Mappy Kids. Um, 
this was a Japanese only game and, it, and they actually English translated it. So I thought that was pretty cool. So now you have the final Mappy game in this collection, which I think makes this collection worth having. Next up, we have Data East Collection Volume 1. This one is pretty awesome, I gotta say. And this one comes with a total of 10 games. But I wanted to show off Magical Drop because a lot of people don't know about this cool puzzle game. It's definitely a lot of fun if you're, if you're a fan of games like Tetris, uh, Dr. Mario, and even Jewel. Then we have Midnight Resistance. Uh, I remember this game briefly back in the day, and I had totally forgot about it. This one's actually a pretty good run-and-gun shooter that I think a lot of people don't know about. Definitely cool to have on this collection as well. And here's Joe and Mac 2, Lost in Tropics. Uh, underrated Joe and Mac game. I like the first one better, but this one's pretty cool too. Next up is Interplay Collection Volume 1. Uh, first game here is Earthworm Slim, I mean Earthworm Jim. <laughs> and this was a classic back in the day that I really liked. I actually played the Sega CD version over the other version. That was like the, pretty much the superior version of the game. But it's nice to know that this game is on here. Very cool. Next up is Incantation. Remember this game like back at the end of Super Nintendo's life cycle. And nobody actually wanted it or wanted to really play it. The main character looked kind of weird. But it was a decent platform game. But uh, it became sought after later. So if you don't want to pay that expensive price, this is probably the best way to get it. And next up is Booger Man Pick and Flick Adventure. One of the most disgusting games I've ever seen. I'm going to let you guys judge this one for yourself. Next up is Atari Collection Volume 2. Um, this one is slightly better than the first one, um, but still, that's not saying much. Here is Basket Brawl, and this is probably as close as you'll get to NBA Jam or Arch Rivals on the Atari 7800 system. Um, trying to play this one was really weird because the controls didn't they seemed very like off but maybe somebody could get some enjoyment out of this game i don't know but here's a basketball game for the system next up is desert falcon this is an isometric shoot em up where you play as a falcon that i guess he's not he can't fly he's on the ground just shooting at stuff so i thought that was pretty funny but still it's actually a pretty decent game if you like shoot em up so uh, if, you, if you like what you're seeing here, maybe you want to try it out for a little while. I don't think you'll be able to play it for long periods of time, but it's actually still kind of cool. And next up is Planet Smashers. This is a shoot 'em up where you have like shields and other kind of weapons at your arsenal. It's actually pretty decent, but still, you know, I'm just not really an Atari guy, so I, yeah, <laughs> I'm the wrong person to ask about these games. But hey, if you like what you're seeing here, um, maybe you'll want to play this one. Namco Museum Collection 2. Now, this is a must have for the system. You get great classics like Splatterhouse Part 2, which I always felt was probably. Um, I think it's the best one in the series, but it's not my favorite. Then you have Splatterhouse 3, which is my favorite, which probably is the least favorite in the series, but I love the way the storytelling is in this game. It really, like, I want to say it wraps things up, but it's a cool beat em up. And next up, we have Burning Force, a 3D shooter. I used to play this in the arcade back in the day. And pretty much the Genesis version, I would say, which is what you're seeing here, it has to scale back a bit compared to the arcade, but I still think it's good enough to be like more, like, not compared to the arcade, but I still think it's a pretty solid experience. Definitely check this one out if you pick up this collection. Next, we have Interplay Collection 2. First game here, Earthworm Gem Part 2. You guys know how I feel about the first one, so I would say this one is just more of the same. Uh, check it out. The next one is Prehistoric Man uh, <laughs> by Titus. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Titus uh, for the infamous Superman 64, uh, they actually made some decent platform games back in the day. Um, Prehistoric Man, you would have to judge if it's one of them, but I love the way the graphics look on it. Then we have Clay Fighter 2 Judgment Day. Um, I've never been a Clay Fighter fan. I don't really care for any of the games, so my opinion about it is going to be pretty biased. You know, I played them before, and it just the control. I'm not going into this. You guys figure it out. Clay Fighter 2 Judgment Day. <laughs> Mega Cat Studios Collection 1. Um, this one has some cool games on it. 
Uh, first game we're going to look at is Creepy Brawlers. Um, kind of reminds you of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I actually thought it was pretty fun. Uh, not doesn't have the same polish as Punch-Out, but still uh, definitely a fun game. Coffee Crisis is an alright beat-em-up. I just felt like the game needed a bit more polish, you know. Especially for me where it comes with the hit detection and stuff like that. And your character kind of like appearing and disappearing. Uh, but still, I mean, I guess it had potential, but it just didn't really live up to it for me. Tantor is a pretty good action game. It kind of reminds me of the old school arcade games where you like kind of like, well, I guess I could kind of say Strider just without all the stunts. Uh, definitely, I say this one is one of the highlights of this collection. All right, next up we have Pico Collection Volume 1. Um, this one has some cool games on it. Uh, first one we'll look at is Iron Commando. Uh, this is a beat em up. I actually played this years ago, and this one is actually a lot of fun it does like, need a bit of polish i feel like enemies have like too much energy sometimes but i don't know maybe that's just me but overall this is definitely one of the fun ones on this collection that i think a lot of people will enjoy gym power is a cool game the only problem i have with this game is that one hit deaths and also the background and the foreground scroll so it's it kind of i don't know i feel like this game can give you motion sickness sometimes but you get past that, you know, you might have a good experience besides the one-hit deaths, but the game actually looks pretty good. And next up, we have Magic Girl. Uh, this is a shoot 'em up and I guess you could call this one a cute em up This one looks okay, but the only problem I had with this one is that the levels are too long, you know. I felt like, they, you know, for certain games like this, the levels can't be too long, but uh, maybe that's just me. But if you're a shoot 'em up enthusiast, you might like this one. Next up, we have Technos Collection 1. This has a lot of the old school 8-bit beat-em-ups on it, like Double Dragon 2. Double Dragon 2 on here is really good. Uh, I'm, I'm in the odd community about this one. I actually like the arcade game better than the NES version. But um, <laughs> let me know in the comments what you think about that because I feel like the arcade game is freaking awesome. Like, it pulls no punches. But the Nintendo version added cinematic cutscenes. And I'll never forget that. You know, it, was, uh, it just really helped, like, kind of flesh out the story. But Double Dragon 2 in all its glory. Renegade is one of the pioneers of 8-bit beat-em-ups. I remember playing this back in the day, and though I like the game, one thing I always hate is that your character always focuses on one person. I mean, he focuses on the person in front of you like he should, but like enemies surround you, and it can get confusing sometimes. But still, if you know how to play this game, you'll get past it. It's a lot of fun. Definitely one of the top beat-em-ups of 8-bits. I didn't play a lot of sports games when I was a kid, but when I was introduced to Super Dodgeball, and I saw that you could do like super moves with the ball, uh, I immediately fell in love with this game. Definitely a charm to have on this collection. Dual game cartridge is a must have for the system. Why? Because it has Xeno Crisis on there. I have talked about Xeno Crisis for the last year, how awesome this game is, and I'm telling you guys, it, it's, it's, it's really good. You got to play this game. It's a lot of fun. It's a throwback to old school. Uh, I just, I can't say enough good things about this game. I've said a lot of stuff in previous videos, and I feel the same way about the Evercade version. Uh, you have to get used to the controller, though, because the Evercade version is just like the Genesis version, since you don't have a, 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 dual, a dual analog stick. You have to use the buttons to kind of aim. But anyways, guys, um, just pick up, you got to pick this one up, definitely. And next game on this collection is Tanglewood. Um, only thing I can really say about Tanglewood, if you are a fan of games like I want to say Echo the Dolphin, the old school Echo the Dolphin, you you probably will, will be interested in this game. Me personally, um, this is one of those games where you have to explore, and you know it doesn't really give you any context of what you have to do. You just kind of have to figure it out. But this game might be others cup of tea, so it is included next to Xeno Crisis, so. Uh, definitely worth getting because of that. Next up, we have the Oliver Twins collection. Uh, I remember hearing about these back in the day, and I was—I always heard that they were really bad games. But looking at them now, I just feel like maybe they're just probably like kids' games, you know, for like really young kids to, to kind of play. Um, the games graphically look good, but the gameplay is like kind of like, man, what the heck? But still, uh, it's going to be an acquired taste to play any of these games on this collection but still you know like I said it might be worth it for some folks alright now we're at Atari Lynx collection one 
Uh, the Arshari Links is a system I've always wanted to play and never got a chance to. So the first game we're looking at here is Scrapyard Dog. Uh, this is about a boy and his dog. The dog gets kidnapped by other dogs and taken away. It, it's, pretty <laughs> it's pretty much a simple, I mean, I guess somewhat platform game. Um, but you have like all kind of enemies trying to attack you from birds, dogs with guns, and just, I don't know. But it actually seems pretty cool, so I'm definitely looking forward to playing this a little bit more. Remnant Planner Wars was made back in 2000 for the Atari Lynx. Uh, I had no idea this game existed, but that's pretty cool. This is a space shooter where you travel through space shooting alien ships and asteroids. Pretty cool. Next we have Basket Brawl. <laughs> Arch Rivals, this is not. Um, but... <laughs> I don't know, guys. You have to try this game out. Um, it's a two-on-two, -two, or you can pick one-on-one -on -one basketball, Basket Brawl battles. And... Um, yeah, just try this one out. <laughs> Alright, and finally, Atari Lynx Collection 2. This one has a game called Blue Lightning, and it, it reminds me of, I want to say, Afterburner. Just not like the fast-paced action, but still, I thought this one was pretty cool. Uh, might be one you want to check out on this collection. And then next is California Games. I used to be really good at California Games on the NES, so I decided to try it out here. And... I went straight to the surfing part to see if I could still hang, and I actually did pretty good. I took it easy at first, then I started trying to do a couple of tricks here and there, and I actually did all right. Then we have Todd's Adventures in Slime World. I heard of this a long time ago, and what this reminds me of, it, it is a platform game, but it reminds, remind, reminds me of an old DOS game. I can't remember what it was, but still, I thought this one was pretty cool. It might be something that people want to play on this collection. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this video. I think ultimately the Evercade success will, will be decided by if they keep putting games out continually and also if they could get like their product in stores like GameStop, Best Buy, stuff like that. I think they're on the right track now. You could get this device on Amazon. My thoughts on it, like I said, I think it's a good system. I think it's worth it, especially if you want to start collecting like retro type games and the screen looks good and playing this on the big screen is nice. So I uh, hope you like this video. Also in the description. I'll be leaving the games that come with each volume so you guys can see what, what games come with it. So, anyways, guys, that's all I got. Radical Reggie, and I will see you all later.